We are back with Dr. Ali Hassoun, an infectious disease specialist at Huntsville Hospital. Uh, Dr. Hassoun, today, Alabama Senate Minority Leader Bobby Singleton said the state isn't ready to send kids back to the classroom. We also know some districts are pushing their start dates back. Um, are we going to be putting our kids' health in jeopardy if we send them back to school next month? So with the current rate of infection and with the continuous spike with no other plan to reduce that, I think, yes, it's going to be a major issue if we're going to open it as they were talking about August 17 or August 15. You're really going to need four to six weeks to see a reduction of cases um, to have control on it. So I think it might be a good idea to try to push it some to have everybody's time to cut down on cases, to see a reduction in spikes, and see a way of controlling it better. But at this stage, if we continue having the same, I really don't see how we can start face-to-face -face teaching and education. And Dr. Hassoun, as you mentioned, the cases continue to spike here in Alabama. From a scientific perspective, or in your opinion, do we need to revert back to a mandatory stay-at-home order at this point? Um, I believe I think that's the best way to go at the moment um, because um, we've tried different ways. We've asked the public to do it um, and we're not reaching a point of control. It's getting worse. I think we probably should do it now and start from the beginning again, reset it where we lock it down and reopen as we have good signs um, of improvement. And I think that would work. I want to go back to the schools for just a moment. American Academy of Pediatrics said we've got to send kids back to school for a myriad of sure. reasons. It doesn't impact kids, as we know, uh, as much as adults. So you're a father yourself. Are you comfortable sending your kids back? So, and I've seen the recommendation, and I see it. So in a way, yes, face-to-face -face education is very important because it's not about just teaching. It's social interaction. The kid's going to get the benefit of all that. But... On the other hand, as a public health crisis ongoing with high chances of transmission, of course, the kids does not get sick as much as the adults, but they can be a way of transmitting to others. If one case happened in a school, that school will be shut down completely. So it is very difficult now where in states where there's significant rise to say, yeah, let's open it up and see how things go. I understand in places where there is reduction, that's a different story. But now it's very difficult to agree with that and just say, go ahead and do it and hopefully everything going to be okay. So it sounds like what you're saying is even though um, taking into account the sort of psychological impact and the socialization, it sounds like what you're saying if parents have the option that you would recommend they keep their kids home. I think at the moment with all these numbers, I think I think that will be the best way to do it at the moment. Unless, and I've had many parents ask me these questions, and what I usually say, yes, if our cases start going down for two to four weeks and we see significant reduction, we have more access for management, treatment, vaccination, we have other ways of testing all these people, absolutely get them to go to school and do it. But till we have a lot of these factors where we can control things, I think virtual learning w would be the best option now. So we've talked a lot about what you can do to protect yourself. Others, honestly, none of us know what lies ahead. So with everything that's happening, where do you come down as to what's going to happen in the future? Um, I think if this continue and no further action done, we're going to see our hospital completely full everything got to be strained, pressured, no beds, um, no effective way of management because all medical staff will be affected, nurses, everybody. On the other hand, if we lock down and try to implement testing more, um, get people follow as much as we can, the rules if they need to go out and then start cutting down on things, I think we'll be successful in controlling this. And it doesn't take long. It takes two to four weeks to control it, but we need to start it now. Dr. Hussain, we all know that this is a very scary and difficult time. What is your message to people here in North Alabama? 
Yeah, the message always going to be the same. Please help us to be all together uh, to face this problem. It is frustrating. Um, there's a lot of people tired of all this, but I think we can do it all together, united in a way of keeping the simple rules if we can, um, where we should keep the physical distance, the masking, um, you know, don't get into restaurants if there's a lot of uh, people in, if there's no um, rules of masking or 50% occupancy. And the same goes for supermarkets and other areas. Community need to help us um, to get through this. If they don't, we're going to see more death, more problems, and more issues. Dr. Ali Hassoun, we appreciate your candor, infectious disease specialist with Huntsville Hospital. Thank you so much for your time and insight tonight, Dr. Hassoun. Thank you.